Welcome to Unit 5 of Economics, titled Business and Labor. So, we know that the business world is filled with various structures and entities, each playing a unique role in the economic ecosystem. So, this uh, unit will um, take a look, will take a comprehensive exploration of partnerships, franchises, corporations, mergers, and nonprofit organizations. Understanding the intricacies of these components is pivotal for comprehending the dynamic and diverse nature of the business landscape. So to begin, we will take a look at the different types of partnerships. Partnerships serve as a cornerstone of business collaboration. Uh, let, we will take a look at the distinct types, beginning with general partnerships. In this structure, all partners equally share profits, losses, and managerial responsibilities. However, each partner is personally liable for the business's debts and obligations. The mutual sharing of responsibilities can lead to a strong bond among partners. The second type would be limited partnerships. This form involves both general partners who oversee the business and limited partners who contribute capital or money but have restricted liability and no active management role. It's an effective way to bring in investors without exposing them to excessive risk. Third would be limited liability partnerships. And um, once you hopefully graduate from college and start working, this is the type of partnership that you will most likely open should you open a type of partnership. So this is similar to a general one, but it offers partners limited liability which provides a safety net against each other's actions. This structure is favored in professional services firms, especially uh, such as law firms or accounting practices. The fourth type would be a joint venture. It's a partnership for a specific project or duration, allowing collaboration without forming a distinct legal entity. So joint ventures facilitate the pooling of resources for mutual, for mutual benefit without a long-term commitment. Now, franchising. Franchising is a business model where a franchiser licenses its brand, products, and operational methods to a franchisee. The franchisee pays initial fees and ongoing royalties for the right to operate under the established brand. This model provides an avenue for independent business ownership while leveraging the reputation, operational systems, and support provided by the franchiser. It ensures consistency in operations and, serves, and services across various locations, offering both independence and the advantages of a recognized brand. Corporations, as separate legal entities, have distinct features and financial instruments. Now, when we say stocks, when we say bonds and corporations, these are methods for companies to raise money or capital, as we call it in business and economics. So how do, how do they raise capital? Well, beginning with stocks. Stocks represent ownership in the company. That's what a stock is. A stock is an ownership piece in a business. Shareholders hold equity and have a claim on the company's assets and profits. Stocks can appreciate or depreciate based on the company's performance and market conditions. They offer investors voting rights and dividends. Bonds operate as loans made to the corporation. So bondholders receive fixed interest payments and the repayment of their principal at the bond's maturity. Bonds are generally considered less risky than stocks and serve as a means for corporations to raise capital through debt. Corporations provide shareholders with limited liability, protecting their personal assets from the company's debts or legal issues. They also have the advantage of perpetual existence, regardless of changes in ownership. Later on in the unit, we will be looking at the types of corporate murders and analyzing them. So we can separate them into three categories. Horizontal mergers involve companies in the same industry or sector merging together. 
This type of merger can lead to increased market power, reduced competition, and greater economies of scale. Vertical mergers, on the other hand, engages companies at different stages of the production or distribution process merging. This type aims for more control over the supply chain, supply chain, improved efficiency, and cost reduction. Now, conglomerate merger sees companies from unrelated industries combining. Such mergers facilitate diversification, spreading risks across different sectors, and expanding market reach. Mergers can lead to synergy, cost savings, and increased market power. However, they also face challenges like cultural integration, regulatory hurdles, and potential redundancies. Finally, we're going to take a look at nonprofit organizations and the purpose of nonprofit organizations. So these serve uh, various societal purposes. So think of charitable, char charitable organizations, for instance. These serve humanitarian causes, such as poverty alleviation, disaster relief, and community development. Educational organizations focus on advancing education through schools, libraries, and scholarship programs. Religious organizations cater to spiritual and community, and community needs, fostering religious or spiritual growth and supporting communities. Scientific and research organizations conduct research to advance scientific knowledge and innovation. Social services work towards social welfare, including healthcare, housing, and support for vulnerable groups. And we have our final type, which are professional and business organizations. Now, these provide a platform for professionals in a specific field to network, exchange knowledge, and advocate for their industry's best practices. Examples of these could be the Chartered Financial Analysts Institute, the CFAs, uh, or CPAs, and the likes. Now, nonprofits operate without the goal of distributing profits to shareholders. Instead, they reinvest any surplus into furthering their mission or goals. Now, it's important as you go through this unit to take a look at our Beyond Classroom platform. There, you'll find an abundance and a plethora of resources. You'll find tutorials, lesson objectives, as well as unit projects. And um, you, you can find self-assessments, which help you test your knowledge of the lessons that you take and test your knowledge of the unit, as well as challenging questions and further practice questions, which help you delve dive, which help you dive deeper into the material or help you understand if should you find yourself struggling with understanding particular concepts or particular lessons. So I hope that this um, introduction to the unit has served you in good use, and I look forward to seeing you all and working with you soon. Thank you.